We start with a point. Hi, it's Rob Bryanton, and welcome back to the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video vlog. And uh, Jason has a nice little uh, thing happening here today for uh, an article where we're talking about the quantum universe. And of course, the uh, quanta are what the universe is divided into uh, tiny little plank length slices. So, uh, this entry, if you'd like to read along with it, uh, we do provide a link in the uh, description box over here on YouTube to the uh, text version of the blog, which is called Creativity and the Quantum Universe. There's an article published in the February issue of Discover magazine which really caught my eye. Written by Mark Anderson, it's called Entangled Life. I'd like us to look at some excerpts from that article now. Graham Fleming sits down at an L-shaped lab bench, occupying a footprint about the size of two parking spaces. Alongside him, a couple of off-the-shelf lasers spit out pulses of light just millionths of a billionth of a second long. After snaking through a jagged path of mirrors and lenses, these minuscule flashes disappear into a smoky black box containing proteins from green sulfur bacteria, which ordinarily obtain their energy and nourishment from the sun. Inside the black box, optics manufactured to billionths of a meter precision detect something extraordinary. Within the bacterial proteins, dancing electrons make seemingly impossible leaps and appear to inhabit multiple places at once. Peering deep into these proteins, Fleming and his colleagues at the University of California at Berkeley and at Washington University in St. Louis have discovered the driving engine of a key step in photosynthesis, the process by which plants and some microorganisms convert water, carbon dioxide, and sunlight into oxygen and carbohydrates. More efficient by far in its ability to convert energy than any operation devised by man, this cascade helps drive almost all life on Earth. One of the central controversies surrounding my project is whether it's really correct to apply the thinking of quantum mechanics to the macro world. Traditionally, science is taught that the weird world of the quantum wave function where outcomes are derived from probabilities and randomness and particles can be in more than one place at the same time, is completely separate from the physical world we see around us. One of the main ideas of my project is that all of these quantum effects occur in the fifth dimension rather than the fourth, and this logical application of what makes one spatial dimension outside the previous one works all the way up. We've talked about this logic in entries like, why do we need more than three dimensions? Aren't there really 11 dimensions? And you can't get there from here. Visualizing the wave function for our universe as coming from the next dimension up gives us a way to reconcile how such seemingly strange and unimaginable quantum effects as entanglement and tunneling could be a part of our reality. Like the 2D Flatlander, who would have some hope in being able to imagine the third spatial dimension as time, but would find the fourth dimension completely strange and unimaginable, we as 3D creatures are in the same quandary. How can we imagine all this quantum weirdness as being connected to our solid physical world? With my project, I provide a way to visualize the fifth dimension that ties in with that idea and many others. Now I'd like to read some more excerpts from that Discover Magazine article. From tunneling to entanglement, the special properties of the quantum realm allow events to unfold at speeds and efficiencies that would be unachievable with classical physics alone. Could quantum mechanisms be driving some of the most elegant and inexplicable processes of life? For years, experts doubted it. Quantum phenomena typically reveal themselves only in lab settings, in vacuum chambers chilled to near absolute zero. Biological systems are warm and wet. Most researchers thought the thermal noise of life would drown out any quantum weirdness that might rear its head. One of the most significant quantum observations in the life sciences comes from Fleming and his collaborators. Their study of photosynthesis in green sulfur bacteria, published in 2007 in Nature, tracked the detailed chemical steps that allow plants to harness sunlight and use it to convert simple raw materials into the oxygen we breathe and the carbohydrates we eat. Specifically, 
the team examined the protein scaffold connecting the bacteria's external solar conductors, called the chlorosome, to reaction centers deep inside the cells. Unlike electric power lines, which lose as much as 20% of energy in transmission, these bacteria transmit energy at a staggering efficiency rate of 95% or better. The secret Fleming and his colleagues found is quantum physics. To unearth the bacteria's inner workings, the researchers zap the connective proteins with multiple ultra-fast laser pulses. Over a span of femtoseconds, they followed the light energy through the scaffolding to the cellular reaction centers where energy conversion takes place. Then came the revelation. Instead of haphazardly moving from one connective channel to the next, as might be seen in classical physics, energy traveled in several directions at the same time. The researchers theorized that only when the energy had reached the end of the series of connections could an efficient pathway retroactively be found. At that point, the quantum process collapsed and the electron's energy followed that single most effective path. Electrons moving through a leaf or a green sulfur bacterial bloom are effectively performing a quantum random walk, a sort of primitive quantum computation to seek out the optimum transmission route for the solar energy they carry. We have shown that this quantum random walk stuff really exists, Fleming says. Have we absolutely demonstrated that it improves the efficiency? Not yet, but that's our conjecture and a lot of people agree with it. Now this revelation is amazing enough. But then the article goes on to talk about new research that explores other ways in which the quantum world is very much a part of our macro world, imparting unique fragrances to molecules that are almost identical, imparting healing qualities to substances like green tea, and perhaps even directly contributing to consciousness. Visualizing how much this quantum dance is participating in the creation of the world we see around us is really not that dissimilar to the journeys of discovery that we've just looked at in entries like The Shaman and Modern Shamans. In Music and the Dance of Creativity, we talked about this joyful process of creativity that underlies our universe. And in the holographic universe, we talked about the new scientific evidence announced in 2009, confirming that for our 4D universe, our line of time is not continuous, but rather being constructed one plank frame at a time. That new scientific evidence can be added to the list of reasons supporting my conclusion that in order for the quantum world to make sense, we have to see how it's coming from the fifth dimension. In entries like Dreaming of Electric Sheep and Imagine the Omniverse, we looked at trying to visualize how our specific universe might be able to come into focus from the Omniverse where every possible state exists simultaneously. Let's think about how that is essentially a creative process that we're describing. Out of all possibilities, one is selected. Take a close look at Mark Anderson's Discover Magazine article and his description of how photosynthesis uses quantum effects to achieve such high efficiency. Now I'd like to read a section here of that article in which I've substituted some words to help us see how quantum weirdness can also be thought of as a description of the creative process. Instead of haphazardly moving from one idea to the next, as might be seen in work that has no focus, creative ideas travel in several directions at the same time. By simultaneously exploring a set of connections, the eureka of a new inspiration could be found. At that point, the exploration process is collapsed and the creative person follows the new idea that they find most inspiring. Seeing the probability space of our fifth dimensional hologram all around us, waiting with new ideas and inspirations for us to bring into our reality simply by observing some aspect of the wave function of possibilities is another way of understanding how much the quantum world and our macro world are tied together, all part of the same continuum and all part of the ongoing creative process that is happening at every instant in every part of our universe. I'd like to finish off with one of my songs of me sitting at my old piano. Uh, somebody made a joke on uh, YouTube, is there an alternate uh, version of the multiverse where this uh, poor old 100-year-old piano is in tune? <laughs> yes, probably there is, but that's not the one we're in. This song is about how those quantum processes are part of the creation and creativity that is all around us, and that we are a part of as we distill one physical reality from the many quantum paths available to us. It's called Making It Up As I Go. 
That's all for now from the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Next time we're going to talk about new translations that have come about uh, through fans uh, uh, creating things uh, into their own languages, versions of the Imagining the Tenth Dimension animation. So that's for next time. That's all for now from Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. I'm Rob Bryanton. Enjoy the journey. Hi friends, just a reminder that you can now buy a 6 DVD set of my video blogs at 10thdimension.com slash store.